All right. I understand this might come across as a little bit trivial to a lot of people, and that's because it is. And a lot of people might think that this is just me, like, taking an excuse to express my biases, um, which I am. Uh, but the new Pokemon game has released with an unacceptably uh, low standard of performance, and I'm going to make this political. I'm going to make this so political. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is buggy as shit. So the first thing that we have to understand when talking about anything graphical with Pokemon is that these games are bottom of the barrel when it comes to graphical capabilities and art design. They have deliberately chosen to stick to an aesthetic that could have been done a decade and a half ago. Uh, take a look at this. This is on the Switch, okay? This is on the same hardware that ran Breath of the Wild. That's right. That was a freeze. You know, I've always considered it unacceptable um, when consoles can't run a game properly. Because when, unlike making a PC game where everyone's PC is different, like you know exactly what a console can do. All of the hardware is known to you. It's not, uh, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not like an unknown variable. This is far from the only example that I have. Uh, you know. This is a bug, apparently. This is quite nice. Like that. So that's cool. Go! Again, please remember that in terms of graphical capability, I hope you all understand that what we're looking at right here could have been done on a PlayStation 2. Um, maybe if we're being charitable, you can say there are some effects or like maybe the draw distance would have needed a PS3. Maybe. But I think, I think pretty, pretty much all of this could have been done on a PS2 without much issue. Uh, you know, people make jokes about the graphical capabilities of the Switch, but like, yeah, you know, here's, here's like Xenoblade, which ran on the Switch. I mean, the new Monster Hunter game ran on the Switch. Uh, Breath of the Wild ran on the Switch. I mean, again, this is what Pokemon looks like. Like, so, you know, okay. I want I want to spend some time like dissing this, I guess, dissing. Uh. But I I want I want to make it clear, okay? I Okay, you guys know how making fun of Marvel movies for being like really samey and committee driven can be kind of based actually sometimes because uh while it is okay to enjoy a Marvel movie, I have enjoyed Marvel movies. Um, the original Iron Man was really good. Thor Ragnarok was really good. I like those movies. I still think it's important to kind of push back against cultural homogenization. Or to put it another way, you know? Um, there are some fast food places that I enjoy, like, get, eating at. You know, everyone likes McDonald's nuggets, I guess. But that doesn't mean it might not be an issue if you'll find McDonald's the same place everywhere on earth and everything just becomes the same thing, you know? Um, I think it's, it's, it's cool actually to, you know, criticize media that, uh, is, is bland or homogenous, uh, or that fails to meet what, what, what should be considered like an acceptable standard of consumer expectations, you know? Oh yeah. God, look at this screenshot. I can't like, look at this. PS1. I mean, excluding the draw distance. Look at this. This looks like one of those like retro games that you would like an indie retro game where where they deliberately make it in a PS1 art style but with a modern resolution and frame rate. Seriously. Um like yeah. Okay. Um yeah, Wind Waker looked a lot better than this. Yeah, again, there's, you know, people you know, blah blah blah. Um yeah. But um 
it, it doesn't look great. So here's the issue, okay? Pokemon makes like basically an infinite amount of money. Uh, Pokemon makes an ungodly, we're talking like tens of billions of dollars. Uh, it's an unfathomably uh, lucrative franchise. And I think it's, I'll go so far as to say, I think it's morally unacceptable that games are being released in the condition that I've just shown you. I don't, I'm not going to pretend that I know everything about the behind the scenes stuff. Like Game Freak, the company that like Nintendo contracts their, their Pokemon stuff out to. I don't know how much of it is just them being lazy and letting an intern do all this work. I don't know if Nintendo disallows them from like over investing. I don't know if it's a time crunch. Um, I'm going to avoid like making any specific criticisms or like assigning any specific blame. And I'm just going to say this, you know, people are really, um, people are really, um, emotionally biased towards nostalgic experiences. Um, if a, so this is why brand is so important, like branding, you know, a product of equal quality can have its value increased dramatically if you can slap a brand on it. Think of how many things are only popular because they're associated with big brands, right? Um, think of all of the like recent Star Wars shows that have come out where it's like, well, why do you hear about them? You know, they could have just made independent sci-fi TV shows, right? They could have made anything. But they made Star Wars shows. Why? Well, because they could put the Star Wars label on it, you know? And those shows, I've heard Andor is really good. I'm not besmirching that at all. But I think that brand recognition is a really, like, um, dangerous thing. It's a very easy psychological bias to exploit. And I don't always think it's bad to do this. I don't have an issue with using a brand to, like, popularize uh, a piece of media on its own. There are plenty of examples that I could think of where, you know, I, I've really enjoyed something that didn't need to be branded, uh, uh, but but I kind of appreciated the association, you know? I find this stuff really heinous, though, because what I think we're seeing here is culture death. Pokemon has not culturally evolved since, like, let's be real, the original anime first came out. It hasn't. The Pokemon Sun and Moon anime, I think, really updated the art style. And I think that's great. I think that's worthwhile. Recently, you know, the, the anime got a bunch of attention because Ash finally won a world championship. But apart from that, in terms of like, what do people talk about? What experiences are people having with Pokemon? A aesthetically, narratively, you know, what are people doing with the series? The answer is, Nothing. Everything has stayed the same. There has been no, and people will argue with me on this, but I'm sorry, you're wrong. There's been no real effort to make the Pokemon experience substantially more than it was back when I was a kid. When I was playing Pokemon Yellow on my Game Boy Color and watching the original Pokemon anime with the four kids dub, the fundamental experience has remained the same. I've watched episodes of the anime of Sun and Moon because I thought the art style was worth taking a look at. The narrative story beats are exactly the same as they were back in the 1990s. Uh, aesthetically, things have improved in the anime. I don't know if I can make many claims to aesthetic improvement for the games because, wow, like, look at this, you know? I want to be clear. This does not mean that the experience that you're having with Pokemon is bad. There's a reason why the franchise is successful. If something stays the same, but people still like it, does that make that thing bad? Well, my argument is yes. We're talking about multi-billion dollar companies here that have an enormous amount of control over what you consume. We're not talking about like independent Twitter artists or whatever, right? We're talking about cultural, like kingmakers. We're talking about institutions with the power to decide what we experience. And with that kind of power, I do think it's bad to promote not only stagnation, but like just flat out regression. Stagnation in like a lazy derivative form. Not just stagnation, but like stagnation plus like we barely even care. You know what I mean?
like stagnation plus like we're just churning this out. Again, I want to be clear, that doesn't mean it's wrong to enjoy it. There are plenty of things that have remained fairly consistent. The issue that I have, I guess, is that there are so many things that could have been done with Pokemon that haven't been done because there is a a a a a, a departmental bias towards stagnation that they are keeping in effect. You know what I mean? I've seen other game franchises grow and change with time, but the Pokemon franchise, like, remember when, what was it, Arceus came out? And it was like, look at how incredible this is. They're doing trends six years after everyone else, but not updating the gameplay to, like, meaningfully address it, you know? So it's like, you run around open world and collect Pokemon, but, like, it's open world now, you know what I mean? And that was considered, like, a big departure from the standard formula. I guess what I'm trying to say is like Pokemon like as a franchise is anti-innovation and they have so much control over people's minds that I think it's morally wrong that they're like that. I think it's like a kind of regression that in a lot of ways is worse than what you see in like Marvel movies because I think that's morally wrong too. I think Disney controlling basically the whole film industry and then churning out a bunch of committee driven movies that all hit the same emotional beats itself is wrong. I think cultural hegemony from corporate control is wrong, but Marvel movies are more distinct from each other than Pokemon games are from one another. Like Pokemon games make Marvel look movies look like Scorsese pieces. You know, Marvel movies are like this, this, this like, broad diverse range of experiences compared to the hegemonic like normalcy of the pokemon game that they've just been remaking 50 times you know i mean christ uh the from software games have more differences in between them though in large part those differences are because of the sort of like a minor mechanical changes that have been amplified through the fidelity of the combat rather than like broad sweeping uh, uh, uh you know like um concept level changes uh, which have stayed mostly the same for the From Software games. Do, do you guys get what I'm getting at here? This is not the devs being lazy, it's them being forced to release a game every single year? No. First of all, we're not blaming. I'm talking about corporate culture here, not about people being lazy. But with the amount of money Pokemon makes, they could make a masterpiece once a year. Considering the fact they constantly reuse assets anyway, and they're in the modern games, 3D models that have been reused since, like, a decade ago, um, they could if they wanted to. They don't. Uh, I'm not going to blame, you know, whatever. Whatever they end up doing, you know. But uh, it, for me, it's more about, like, they're more, they're, like, fundamental opposition to, um, to, uh, 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 you know, change as a concept. I, I, I say the same stuff about, um, <sighs> you know what, never mind. Never mind, it's fine. If you unironically think that, you know nothing about how game dev works. If you really think a company that's worth $100 billion can't produce something that works better than this once per year, and they don't come out with one new game a year, by the way. That was an exaggeration from chat. There's not new one new Pokemon generation every year. But if you really think that this is like the, uh, you know, the, the, the bottom line, peak performance, yeah. Don't blame the devs, blame the higher-ups. I'm not blaming the devs. I said at the beginning, this isn't about blaming. Uh, okay, never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind. I blame the old hardware of the Switch. No, nope, the old hardware of the Switch is perfectly capable of handling games that look like this. This game is just poorly optimized and ugly. I just, I just don't like the hegemony. I just, I don't, I don't like the, 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 ah, uh, never mind. How does chat not expect more from this? I guess that it just, at the end of the day, it just bothers me when people don't expect more of the institutions that rule their lives. Like, this channel repeatedly has insisted that the government has a responsibility to do everything in its power to improve the lives of the citizens underneath it. And corporations, which are very powerful institutions on their own, like, these are institutions that we want to hold to account so much that we are literally socialists. Like, we're in favor of worker democracy, an end to private corporate control. Um, so, like, the idea of the, some of the largest media companies in the history of the human race 
churning out like samey dog shit, never improving or innovating, and then falling below the standards that would be held to a Steam Greenlight project done by indie devs. And that and like the the idea that doesn't make people angry is really weird to me. It's like they're insulting you. They're spitting on you. Like, yeah, we can make an infinite amount of money, more than anyone could ever reasonably spend, and we're just going to make we don't even care. Like, here you go. Here's your rolling green hills that would have gone in like a Nintendo 64 game with PS2 textures. You know, here's 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 all everything the same over again. We'll never innovate. This is the this is the warm milk bottle that you can always return to, you man children. Looks like a bad Unity game. Yeah, it does. No, I actually take it back. I think this looks better because when I see something like this, I think, oh, it's an indie dev. I wonder what interesting autistic bullshit they put in this game. But you can never think that in Pokemon because everything in Pokemon is so samey um, and so homogenized that there will never be any weird autistic bullshit. If I'm walking around in here, I might encounter a, like a low poly gnome that like makes me play a card game. I don't know, whatever, who knows. Um, but in a Pokemon game, everyone knows exactly what's going to happen because it's a Pokemon game and they haven't changed in 30 years. Not entirely true. Have you seen the Pokemon fan? That's true. The, the autistic bullshit that you find in Pokemon games is when you play multiplayer. I think the reason why people don't get upset is because their mentality is, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That is, that's such a bad mentality when it comes to creative production, though. If it's broke, don't fix it might refer to, like, some basic patterns of, um, of, like, systems, like, system-level stuff. Like, well, how do controls work? How do you want this? How do you want that? But, like, you should change things, right? Like, do we don't want every game dev company just remaking the same thing every time. Um, that it's if it's broke, don't fix it is an anti creative like mentality, you know? You should always be willing to experiment. Um, say that to Call of Duty. There's more innovation between Call of Duty titles than there is in Pokemon, unironically, seriously. People call Call of Duty samey, and it is, but if you play them, like, successively, yeah, there absolutely is more, like, development and change between those games than there is between Pokemon games. Yeah, absolutely there is. You know, you know, y yes, but it's wrong to say it. Yeah, what about, like, Assassin's Creed? Dude, people say uh, Ubisoft sandboxes are samey, which they are, but Assassin's Creed... Like, compared to Pokemon, Assassin's Creed is like every game is like an explosion of creativity. Um, every Assassin's Creed game is like a, like an innovative, you know, like a, like a, like an unorthodox, like turn of the century Russian postmodern artist who's three days away from being executed by the Soviets or something. Like, it's, uh, like, uh, or FIFA games every year. I, that would be the comparison that I'd make. When I think of Pokemon games, I think of like FIFA 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, where it literally is the same game every single time. Um, or Madden or whatever. Um, that's what I would think, yeah. And I and I hate those games. I do. Those games suck. I do. I think they're like death of creativity. Yeah, I hate those. 